Well, Professor, uh, thank you very much indeed for that uh, introduction. Um, I would just, uh, by way of starting, like, like to thank uh, General Miglietta for his uh, invitation to speak this morning and to genuinely congratulate uh, NRDC Italy for this uh, initiative. I think it's absolutely excellent. Uh, it's timely uh, and, and I think um, a, a real mark of the professionalism and forward thinking of the core. Um, my job, uh, uh, as I understand it anyway, is to really set the scene uh, for the work that NATO as an alliance is doing uh, in the cyber environment. Um, and I'm delighted to do so, not least because, uh, as General Villietta said in his introduction, cyber is a domain partner uh, of the land domain. Um, and we absolutely view it as a partner in the joint environment for how military operations uh, should be conducted. Uh, you know, I am very clear, any professional, certainly any military professional uh, who is not interested in cyber really is fooling themselves. Uh, and the fact that we have nearly 250 participants in this conference this morning demonstrates just how uh, interested people are in informing themselves about how we go forward in this topic. Uh, for me, it's not just a professional interest. Uh, it's a personal one as well. I've been involved in the past in trying to knit cyber operations into broader joint operations. Um, and it's difficult. We all know it's difficult. And um, there's no doubt that being in an alliance of 30 nations adds a certain tension uh, in working our way forward, but which I also firmly believe is part of the strength of the alliance approach when 30 nations are in agreement about how we go forward together. Now, um, uh, for those of you who don't like complicated slides, uh, please don't worry, I'm not going to go through uh, every part of this, uh, but I think it is important to understand where, as an alliance, uh, we have come, have come from in determining where we've got to now and how we go forward. And I'll just pick out some of the some of the points. Um, it is ironic, I think, that as NATO started to properly consider cyber, there were the 2007 cyber attacks in Tallinn, um, which, uh, as everybody on this webinar will be familiar with, resulted in a range of um, service denial and other operations against Estonia. Um, Leaving aside the fact that this was one of the first proper manifestations of the seriousness of the threat, I think it's also ironic and somewhat perhaps a slightly cynical point of view that a number of the de direct implications of that attack was firstly the creation of the um, Centre of Excellence into Cooperative Cyber Defence, which has done so much and is doing so much to support NATO but also the writing of the Tallinn Manual on International Law as it applies to cyber warfare. And I think that is a, what was and is a key element of helping to create the architecture, how we are going to operate in cyberspace. 2014 uh, saw um, the importance of recognizing the threat as something that is related to our collective defense, to Article 5. And I think whilst there is still work to be done on that, that was a huge step forward uh, in uh, reinforcing how cyber was impacting on NATO and its operations. Uh, as General Milietta said in his introduction in 2016, saw the recognition of cyberspace as a NATO domain. Uh, and it, in Brussels, um, as part of operationalizing that understanding, NATO created the Cyberspace Operations Center, Center which I'll talk about more in, the, in a moment, but which is fundamental to how the Alliance operates uh, in cyberspace and applies the, uh, the effects from cyberspace. The last thing I'd like to talk about is the publication of the Allied Joint Publication on Cyberspace Operations. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I think it is an absolutely fundamental document 
taking forward this subject. So it hasn't necessarily been quick. Um, it might be kindly regarded as steady process. But as I said in my opening remarks, the strength of the alliance is in the agreement of 30 nations uh, on a way forward. And, uh, and I think, as I hope to explain in the next few minutes, uh, that support is absolutely concrete. Um, NATO uh, now is firmly in the cyberspace operations era. The next slide, please. The Allied Joint Publication uh, on Cyberspace Operations is, I think, an absolutely excellent piece of work. Uh, if you haven't read it, you should. Uh, it's not necessarily long and it's not necessarily complicated. But by its own um, ambition, it focuses on the principles of operating in cyberspace and it is intended to provide guidance to commanders and to staffs about how NATO should be operating in this domain. It is a framework, if you like. It provides a much needed common language and dictionary for NATO nations about the meaning of phrases and terms in cyberspace. Is it ambitious? Well, it's ambitious, I think, uh, in terms of trying to set the baseline of how we operate in NATO. As I said at the beginning, this is an extremely difficult topic, um, and it requires uh, 30 nations to pull together. But um, as it says on the slide, it sets out similarities with traditional domains, it talks about the differences, and it is an essential building block for how we are going to do business in the future. It shows us some of the opportunities that exist in cyberspace, but it does not also shy away from pointing out the difficulties that face us in determining how to conduct offensive and defensive cyber operations. It's a matter of fact, mature piece of work. And, uh, uh, can I keep well. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to Right, I will continue unless someone tells me I am unaudible. Um, if I can have the next slide, please. As I said uh, earlier, the CYOP, the Cyber Operations Command, is how NATO delivers operations in this domain. Uh, and um, reassuringly, it operates in exactly the same way as the other domains do. Um, and I think that's hugely important. In the past, there have been some people who have believed that cyber operations are some kind of fairy dust that you sprinkle around to add value. Um, it's not. It is exactly as it says, another domain uh, which needs to be thought about, which needs to be planned for, and which needs to be incorporated in the extant processes that we have in the Alliance. If money and resources is any indicator in NATO of interest, then no one should be in any doubt about the, the, uh, about the seriousness with which NATO is promoting cyber. Um, and uh, if you are now in the Alliance, particularly at the NATO core structure and the NATO command structure levels, planning to exercise or operate without cyber, then you are not simply wasting uh, opportunity, um, but you really are in denial about how operations in the future will be conducted. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I do not know currently of exercises that are being conducted at the senior level that are not using the PSYOP or all its people to support the exercise and to develop scenarios that need to be thought through. The centre is developing standard operation procedures. It's amending NATO tools and processes to make sure that cyber is properly taken account of. Uh, and anybody familiar with NATO will know that this is not easy work. It's working with individual nations to understand their capabilities and how they might be used to support NATO and alliance operations. And it has deployable elements within it as well that, um, that move to the Joint Force Command level, to other domain levels, and the NATO force structure level uh, to support their work. Um, 
And I've seen in my own headquarters, and I've seen on exercise just how vulnerable those individuals and that capability is. Um, the centre remains at um, its initial operating capability. It's growing all the time in numbers and in expertise, and, and I know it will continue to be a vital part in how we plan for the future. Next slide, please. So looking to that future, um, I've just put on the slide a number of areas, I think, that are the next steps. Um, firstly, as I've said already, the importance of growing the domain to full operational capability within all operational functions. Um, this is not easy or straightforward, uh, but the SIOC is manned uh, and resourced to do that and uh, increasingly, NATO is taking on board um, the importance of making sure that we are flexible enough to incorporate cyber into everything that we do. In order to do that, we need to develop the policies and the standards and the procedures that make the best use of this effect and the effect of individual nations. Again, people who are familiar with NATO will know that this is difficult and it takes time. But it has to be done, and it has to be done by professionals uh, in all of the domains who understand how we can best use these processes. And the sooner we do this, uh, the sooner we will be able to make sure that cyber is part of our daily menu of options in how we operate. Developing the SCEPRA process is, I think, essential. Um, uh, sovereign cyber effects provided voluntarily by the Allies is how NATO, in the short term, will operationalize cyber. Uh, we need to understand what Allies are capable of, and we need to understand what they are prepared to deploy in support of the Alliance. That takes trust, um, uh, it requires individual nations to um, be clear about how they're going to support the Alliance. But unless we have a good working knowledge of what is possible, we will not be able to properly plan for and deploy capability in the future. As I said earlier, we need to provide the environment by which we get better at this. Um, certainly at the NATO uh, command structure level and the NATO report structure level, um, uh, formations and commands are increasingly bringing cyber into everything that they do. Uh, and it is essential. Um, it is essential that if one is conducting a targeting process, a fires process, an intelligence process, a critical information deployment process, cyber is fundamental to that. Uh, and um, whilst we need the experts, of course, to guide us, uh, every professional member of the Alliance should be thinking about cyber as they do about maritime, land, and about air. And as it says, we need to then think about how, not just in the land domain, but more broadly, we are going to share the experience and the lessons learned. Um, it is always easy in the military to identify lessons. It is much harder, frankly, to learn them. And then it is harder still to make sure that others have listened and are applying those lessons within their own reports. Um, uh, the, uh, the Joint Allied Lessons Learned Centre in Portugal is excellent, uh, but we all can do more to support each other. And then lastly, uh, in support, if I may have the next slide, please. And lastly, I am um, talking to the my French colleague, uh, who is the lead for cyber operations in my headquarters, I asked him um, how we might present a number of questions, and he came back with the title of interrogations, which I liked so much that I have left it, although I would ask questioners to be gentle with me uh, if you have got questions. But I think the question, the five, put up five questions which I think are fundamental um, to the future of making the most of this capability in NATO. Um, Everything that we do in the Alliance now is about deterrence. How do we contribute to deterrence? And I think there are valuable and important questions to be asked about how cyber will contribute to deterrence as we go forward. 
as important as it is that NATO at the um, at the Wales summit recognised that cyber was part of the core task of collective defence, I think there needs to be at some level a discussion about what sort of cyber attack would trigger an Article Five response by NATO. Um, and we should, you know, we should be thinking about that. Concerns about dual use, I think, are vital. And again, General Milieta and the moderator talked about this in their opening remarks. Some, somehow we have got ourselves into a position where um, as much as cyber is as equally a domain as land, sea, and maritime, um, we are, I think, somewhat confused about how we might use it. And both in dual use and in reciprocity of response, I am not convinced that we have yet thought through um, how and when we will use cyber in the same way that we use other effects. Improving interoperability and particularly information sharing is difficult. This audience will know that uh, uh, cyber operations are highly intelligence um, needy. They need a great deal of intelligence support. And um, I question at the moment whether we have the processes and the releaseability to uh, really effectively use the capabilities that we have uh, in our grant. And then lastly, I think particularly at the tactical level, and this, um, this question has been asked through the ages about uh, capabilities available to military forces, is at what level should we be using cyber and indeed other weapon systems to support NATO operations. What is tactical cyber? Is it that time-based? Uh, is it distance-based? Uh, is it functional? And I think there's more to be done there. But this is part of the excitement of the subject. Uh, I think we've come a long way um, in a relatively long span of time. Uh, I think you know, we are going to have less time in the future thinking about these questions ahead of time means that we will not have to be answering them in contact, whatever contact might mean. Thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to speak. Uh, uh, once again, I celebrate the fact that this uh, forum is happening and I look forward to answering your questions when you would like. Many thanks.